going on guys? This is Zachary Adkins, co-host of Guitar Autopsy with Rusty Cooley and also an Ormsby endorsed artist. And today we are going to be checking out the RC1 Rusty Cooley signature model. Let's check it out. So we've got our RC1 Ormsby guitar. I ordered this thing about a year and a half ago. COVID got in the way and they weren't able to get everything situated. So it, take, it took it a little while to get in, but super stoked. Before I talk about this, a little bit about me and my story with this guitar, uh, about a year and a half ago, I was going to be getting married and my wife, and I got her a ring and everything. And she asked me, what kind of ring do you want? And I said, well, you know, I don't want a ring because I don't like wearing jewelry. You know, I have fat little fingers, I don't like it. And then when I'm playing, it feels like it clacks on the neck and I don't like that, I don't like wearing rings. So she's like, well, what do you, what would you want? You know, I wanna essentially match whatever you got me on my ring with something that you want. I said, well, how about I get a guitar? So then the search was on, right? We were on a search to uh, find a cool guitar. I saw this one pop up because uh, I'd started talking with Rusty and I met him at NAMM and they were going on sale and I was like, man, that guitar would be really cool to have. Uh, you know, hopefully it's not too expensive, you know, uh, so I can get one. And this was before I was even with Ormsby Guitars. You know, I had never, I had heard of them, but I never really played any of their stuff until I went to NAMM and uh, got to meet Rusty and all that stuff. And I was like, that's the guitar I want right there. It has all the things that I've wanted in a guitar before, you know, and and I have said that since the beginning of it, it was, you know, I was looking for a guitar that was gonna match what I wanted. And, you know, it's difficult to find sometimes because you can go and find a regular guitar that is just off the off the rack and, you know, it plays like all the other guitars. So I wanted something really cool. Anyway, long story short, my wife said, okay, well, once it goes on sale, we'll get it. So it went on pre-orders. And I think we were like one of the first ones to get in there to, to, to get it, so we bought it. And it took, you know, I guess it took about a year and a half to get here. But anyway, so this is technically my wedding ring, which is great. I'll use it more than I would a ring anyway. So very cool. Let's talk about the guitar. Let's look at the listing of the guitar really quick. Okay, so about this listing, uh, Rusty Cooley signature model info as follows. Uh, your choice of six or seven. Now I went with the seven string. So we're just gonna really be focusing on the seven as far as like some of the dimensions, but we'll talk about the six. So first of all, the body is mahogany, which is great. Now, the one thing I did notice about it though was even though the body is mahogany, it's very light. Um, that was the one thing I was really surprised about. The neck, uh, five piece maple, uh, I think it's called Wenge, Wenge? Maple, Wenge, Maple, Wenge, Maple with a carbon fiber reinforcing rod. So let's take a look at that really quick. So on the back, you see that it's a five piece neck. You've got your maple. Then the little darker one here is the Wenge, Maple, Wenge, Maple, right? And then inside it's reinforced with the, uh, like I said, the carbon fiber reinforcement rods, which is super great to have stability, right? When you're, um, you know, you're taking your guitar in and outside or playing outside in a gig, the carbon fiber really helps keep that neck nice and stable so you're not constantly adjusting it and whatnot, okay? So let's go back. Uh, let's see, the, it's an ebony with a partial scallops from the 12th to the 27th fret. So that's the other thing. This guitar has 27 frets, which is pretty insane. Like the access up here, not, not only does it have 27 frets, okay? Because I've seen guitars that have 27 frets, but not only do you have that, but you can reach it even, I have fat hands, okay? They're like meaty little hands. And I can still reach that 27th fret with my pinky and still have room to put an extra finger. I could even reach, if I really wanted to, we could even reach, I could reach all the way up here and get some good bending. So that's just from a design standpoint, very cool. Because I've always felt even on, I've had another Ormsby over here that's got 24 uh, frets and that 24th fret's hard to get to sometimes, you know? And then, so you feel like you're kind of twisting your hand to, to reach that note. This is, uh, especially on the back, you can see they cut so much out. It's super thin here, cut everything else out back here. There's literally no limitation to get even to that 27th fret. You're comfortable all the way up to this note. I love that. And also it had mentioned that it was, uh, 
scalloped on from the, it's like more of like a half scallop, right? Yeah, it says partial scallop. But if you look here, you'll see the partial scallops just from that 12th fret here all the way up to the 27th fret. And by partial, they mean, I don't know if you can even see it in this light. There we go. It just goes up to about here and then it gets a little smaller. So it's like kind of almost like a little, like a pyramid, right? It's short here, gets longer there and then goes down. Very cool. And, and all a scallop thing does is, at least in my opinion, it helps my finger squish into that fret a little bit better so I'm not slipping out of that fret. I can really hear the notes come through really well. Um, but it's not scalloped down here because, you know, like on Yngwie's guitars, sometimes because they're scalloped, you can go a little bit too sharp when you're pushing or you're really trying to, like, you know, add some aggression to your playing. You can push those notes a little bit too sharp, and I don't like that. So um, let's keep going. So uh, both side dots and face markers glow in the dark. That's super cool. Haven't actually played in the dark, which because I usually keep the lights on. But if I were to play it on stage, that would be a really great uh, added feature, I think. So let's talk about the scale length. So you will also notice it is a multi-scale. What is a multi-scale? Essentially what it means is that one side of the neck is a longer scale than the other side of the neck. So it has two different scales. Rather than most guitars that are at a ba essentially a 90 degree angle, this one has a little bit of an offset there. So what it does, at least from my research and understanding, is if you think about like a piano, you have a short side to the piano and you have a long side to the piano. Well, the short side has really tiny strings that don't need to stretch that far to get the, t to get the note that, they, that, that you need. Then when the strings get thicker and thicker and thicker, it curves out more on the piano to allow for those low strings to stretch further. So that way when you hit the desired pitch, it's not flapping around really loosely. It gives it a little bit extra length to stretch. Now on the guitar, a little bit of that concept comes into play here on this low side. So the low side is on the seven string is 26 and a quarter inch. And then on the short side, it is 25 and a half inches. So it's just, you know, not that much at all. It's kind of, I mean, some other multi-scales are really fanned, but this one's just kind of, you know, somewhere at the lower end of a fan. But what I'm noticing is I'm in standard right now. Um, and this B string that normally, if I'm chugging away at this low note, you'd hear a little buzz down here. Well, that's because the string, when it's in a normal, uh, you know, 90 degree, let's say, it will actually uh, flip around a little bit and it'll cause buzzing because the string doesn't have enough room to stretch. It doesn't really do anything with intonation. Okay, that's something that's like a, it's kind of misinformation, I think, about what fan frets do. They don't really help you with intonation. That's not what it's for. It's meant for allowing the string enough room to stretch so that way uh, the note comes out a little bit more clearly and it doesn't flap around and buzz and all this stuff. There's like a lot of cool things there. Now, if then you would say to yourself, okay, well, why isn't both sides, uh, you know, at the 26 and a half or 26 and a quarter, like the seven string is? Well, the other reason is because the longer you make that string, the tighter it's going to be. So which means that the longer the scale, the harder it is to be uh, bending on these high strings, right? So we keep this at a shorter scale so you can still bend those strings, get the vibrato that you want. And you're not cutting up your fingers just to get a couple of notes, okay? Really cool. So if you've never really experienced uh, a multi-scale neck before, definitely give them a shot. This one, and this one's a good one if you've never really experienced them before, because um, it's like I said, it's not a huge scale. Let's keep going. Uh, so it is a Floyd Rose Pro. Now I, I believe it's like the uh, you know it, it's got the. Uh, low profile, right? And by low profile, if you look at some of the older Floyds or the, the regular regular Floyds, the, these sit up, not this, but like these back things here kind of sit up high and all of it sits up and then you end up like putting your wrist up to try to play versus here you can you can be a little bit shorter down towards the bridge and not have to like worry about these. It's uh, low profile, right? Um, it's got just a standard trim system here with the with the bar uh, screws in and out um, and again we're, right now we're talking about the things that that it is what I like and then we'll kind of get to some of the things that maybe I'm not uh, a huge fan of so keep in mind we're, we're still going there um, 
If you look at the locking nut, it is the Ormsby Custom right here. The machine heads are Ormsby designed as well. Electronics is a volume, three-way selector, blade style, and a momentary kill switch. Uh, the pickups are EMG85, EMG707 on the seven strings, and then on the six strings, it's an EMG85 plus an 81 on the six. So let's break that down just a little bit here. Um, the Floyd Rose Pro, low profile, which is really great. And then it talked about the locking nuts. Let's take a look at the locking nuts. These are really interesting. So if you look right here, instead of having the standard locking uh, Floyd tune, or the, the, instead of having the standard locking nuts that the Floyds would have, this is an Ormsby designed locking system. So you'll notice it's got little grommets, or they're called little grubs, I guess. So they got little grubs in there that uh, essentially push down on each string individually so you're not just having like a plate on multiple strings squishing everything down. Um, I'm not sure if it really does benefit anything. I've, you know, it, I'm so new to this, you know, I'm used to just the regular Floyd one. So I'm, I'm curious to see how well this thing stays in tune while I'm, you know, doing a bunch of whammy bar tricks and whatnot. But um, basically, there was an issue with these from what I understand because my guitar was one of the first ones I believe that got sent out and this, the first few were having issues down here on the top high strings where the individual little grubs uh, they're supposed to be like flat on both sides think like a little barrel you know and they they're just supposed to be flat on both sides well the ones that that came in had little little grooves little teeth or something so anytime you'd screw it down and then you'd unscrew it it would just completely clip the string because it had those little teeth and it would just clip the string. And that was a problem. I talked to Perry Ormsby about it. He gave me a solution to fix that. And he did say that they caught this on the guitars before all of them had gotten sent out. So if yours doesn't have an issue down here, then you're fine. If you do have an issue, uh, you know, you can hit me up and, uh, you know, I can help you. I can tell you what Perry had me do to fix it. It's all better now. It's not a big deal. It literally took like two minutes. I like the idea that you can individually unscrew one string, tune it, and then screw that one back down. Uh, but I, I just don't know enough about it because it's kind of a new concept, in my opinion, for myself. I just don't know how I feel about it yet. I'm curious and I'm, I'm hopeful that it, uh, you know, creates a little more stability when I'm you know, taking one off so it doesn't make the other ones go out of tune. But again, I don't know. On the back, the machine heads, which is these right here, these are all Ormsby designed as well, and they are locking, which is great because then you can tighten these, which also gives you, if you look here, you only have to go around, I don't know if you can even see that, it might be too close, but you don't have to like go around each one of these pegs six, seven times, which you really don't want to do anyway when you're tuning. And, and restring a guitar because when you tune the guitar back up the more winds you have the more you're going to have to allow that string to stretch that's just the way it works so here we only need a little bit of a like i mean just enough and these will grab the locking tuners will grab those strings and then you can clip them really short makes changing the strings super quick love that design so the body of the guitar said it was a mahogany body which is great you will notice that this super high cutaway is just insane. And they've got this super high cutaway too, which kind of makes sense because, you know, the more you have here that's cut, it's gonna make this not look so awkward down here, which is great. Um, Cause you really don't need this to be cut this high, but it just ended up working out pretty good. Uh, the other thing that's really cool is on the back, it's got these um, locking tuner or locking uh, strap locks, which they're kind of set in a position that from what I understand that Rusty had told me was when he sits in like classical position like this, you know, when you're just playing, when you stand up, it will keep the guitar at that angle. Something I never really thought about, but luckily we have somebody who has thought about that. On the back, you can see, I'm just kind of get this, there we go. It's got the easy access back here, which is great. You can just put the screwdrivers through to mess with the, the screws in the back instead of having to take the whole plate off, which I uh, appreciate. It's got the back, the back plate over here. And inside here, you just got the components and the battery for the EMG pickups. So nothing really crazy there. On the front again, let's take a look here. Uh, it's got a kill switch, super cool. And then uh, even just something so small that Ormsby does, which I like, is on these little 
uh, volume knobs and stuff. They've got little rubber kind of O-rings around them, which makes it really easy to move it up and down and not have your fingers slip. That's what she said. <laughs> With these pickups, just a three-way, you know, you're on your bridge, and then uh, both, and then your neck pickup. And, you know, obviously you can still see those scallops and stuff. They're very well done, especially on this one. And, I mean, that's pretty much all you can say. Um, let me make sure. Oh, uh, on the bottom here, it's got a cavity cut out of the back. So that way when you're sitting in classical position, this is like hidden instead of being on the outside of the body and then your leg starts smacking it, so. But that is the review. I'm gonna play a little bit. You guys can kind of hear some of the sounds, kind of how high those notes go. Very happy with this guitar. Really excited to um, come up with some solos on it and experiment with the high strings, or the high frets on those high notes strings. I'm really excited to try it out and uh, haven't had a lot of time to play it yet, actually, which is kind of a bummer, but. It's all right. So hope you guys enjoyed the review of the guitar. So go ahead and hit that like button on the video, subscribe, leave a comment if you have anything that you want to say about the guitar. If you have one of these guitars, what are some of your favorite things about it? And uh, hope you guys just enjoy how beautiful this thing is because it's really great and I'm very grateful to have this guitar and hopefully I can have a few more added to my collection at some point. So. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video.